to Stefana Muller, your founder and organizer for Long Island Women in Tech. And today we're going to do some fun things that are not about our own learning, but more about our kids' learning or kids in our community. So we're going to be on the computer games and go into coding for kids. Before I get started on the content for today, I wanted to thank Long Island Women in Tech, which is the group I, I run, and all the professional women and men who join our group and help us out. There are 250 techies that are now part of this group. I do want to uh, promote them and say that if you have not yet joined Long Island Women in Tech, what are you waiting for? Go to iwomenintech.com and you can check out what we have to offer. Lots of training sessions, networking sessions, um, and speaking opportunities for those of you who are looking for a new opportunity to speak in front of larger groups of folks. So let's get into the content of the day. And I keep to use Steve Jobs in my quotes because everyone knows who Steve is, right? Um, and that he said, I, I think everybody in this country should learn how to program a computer because it teaches you how to think. And I never thought of it this way until I started teaching coding to kids, but it actually does teach you the order in which you should think. And it's, it's one of the fundamental skills that we don't realize our kids really are, are needing in their lives. And there are a few stories along the way so you can understand how that applies. But we get into what is Hour of Code and that introduction. I wanted to start at the basics for those of you who have not actually been introduced to coding at all, which happens to be the majority of folks. So don't feel afraid that you just don't know how to code or you don't know what it is and you don't understand why you'd want to know what it is. Um, so let's give you guys the basics and then we'll get into the why. So coding, coding is a set, a code or, or coding is a set of instructions or rules that computers can understand. So the way that you would tell a computer what to do. It's instructions, it's like a guideline. It's, it's the computer, hey, I want you to show me a picture that looks like this. I want you to allow me to click here. I want you to do all these different things. Take code and code for those computers. So computers by themselves are great, but they do nothing unless you tell them what to do. It's a, I don't want to use a, a, a male-female joke on the phone, but, you know, it's like your kids. <laughs> and you don't tell them what to do. They'll just sit there and be bored or annoy you. So you've got to tell that computer what to do. And the way you tell it is not through the English language. It's really through code. And let me into a little bit more. Code actually powers almost anything that uses electricity. So if you're wondering if you ever interacted with code before, absolutely is the answer, unless you live out in the desert with no human interaction or technology interaction, right? Apps, website, software, computer hardware. I mean, your car, you turn on your car, that's code at starting at, at the start of turning on a car. Uh, medical devices, your TV, household appliances, my stove. Yes, my stove. I had to troubleshoot it the other day. Um, ATMs, elevators. I, I say this all the time, and seriously, everything in life is running on some sort of computing device that reads code and was told to do this type of work by a human. Our programmers, developers, computer scientists, and software engineers, but they also can be CEOs, so heads of companies, heads of technology organizations like CTOs, Chief Technology Officer, board members, presidents. Did you know the President of the United States, and oh, this will not become a political presentation, but did you know that President Obama knows how to code? So yes, anyone could be a coder. Anyone can be a programmer. I'm a mom, I'm a VP of business development. My role today does not involve coding at all, but guess what, I'm a coder, and I also teach kids to code. So you can be a teacher that teaches liberal arts, and you can still learn to code. It is not something that's far reaching um, at like rocket science, science. So there's another thing I want to mention about coding is that coding comes in many different languages. It's like speaking English or or Spanish, 
Well, we have different coding languages, and some of them are called like Python, C, C++. Uh, some of the more um, well-known ones are like Java, JavaScript, Ruby, PHP. Uh, Python's really big because Google has put that language, and it's also really simple. Lots of kids are learning JavaScript. So just keep the ideas in mind of what code coding languages are. Now I'm past what is coding, and I apologize for those of you who already know that, but this is kind of a good slide if you need to use it to share it with your kids so that they understand what coding is. Look forward, and we're going to go into why coding. So I think, uh, it's not just what I think, right? So I can tell you what I think, and I, what I think, obviously, I'm, I'm a I guess I'm bigot. I don't know if that's possible, but I am pushing coding to every level of the education spectrum. And it's what I think it's proven. Code is a crucial life skill that supports your children's intellectual and creative development. It's that fundamental skill that's missing alongside our liberal, liberal arts and math curriculum. So critical thinking, problem solving, confidence, curiosity, innovation, all these things we're trying to get our kids to do in school today. And I'll see some stuff later, the majority of schools don't even have a coding curriculum or introduce students to what coding is. So if this type of skill can actually support all the other things we want children to learn while we're in school, Really, an important skill. If I, if, if you, if you ask me, um, will drive innovation. It allows your kids to be creative. It builds their confidence. Um, and another thing, it's really it it just plays into other success. Confidence, patience, trying again, not getting upset the first time something fails. I see my kid on the soccer field right now, and I guys, you know. Envision this for me. If, if you think about it, my kids at the field, she doesn't get a goal this game. Everyone gets a goal but her. She's screaming, crying, kicking her feet. That's not an appropriate reaction. Well, what we taught kids skills like feeling in school. And that's very important, right? Obviously, something I have to teach my kids as well. <laughs> so, what is, uh, wh when should we teach kids to code? It's learn learned early. I had a two-year-old learning to code on a, a tablet um, instead of watching videos on YouTube of her favorite TV show. Uh, so that's a great alternative to if a kid is really advanced with your phone or your, your iPad, well, you can give them a coding app so that they can learn something along the way. And um, so let's go into beyond why coding. Now that we've kind of proven why coding, I'll go into some more stats here that are really important for you to share with your community and other parents and teachers and educators. The problem that we have is computer science. You've all probably heard that STEM is really important. STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. And the interesting thing about STEM is, or STEAM, sometimes we throw all in there, S-T-E-A-M, right, um, is that 71% of all new jobs are in STEAM are in computing. Including, they're in all those other areas. And 8% of STEM graduates are computer science. That's a big disparity, guys. This is why I'm so, I think this is so important, and that's, this is why I do these sessions. So let's talk a little bit about what our industry needs. So I've been in this industry 16, almost 17 years. Oh, it's almost been 20. I'm never going to claim 20, guys. I'm going to go backwards from there. But technology affects every field. Every field that you walk into, you could be dealing with, you know, eye care on the right side, how they develop new, new, um, new devices for medical devices. Your home heating system, if anyone has a Nest, They'll understand me when I say Nest is me out and I had to reprogram it today. Um, but your phone, you know, just surgery. 
surgery has done with computing um, and, and animation, 3D animation, or just, you know, to get to the autonomous car. Uh, eventually, we'll be no longer having to drive our cars. They'll drive for us. That's all technology. Hanging jobs are the number one source of wages in the United States. So if you really want your kid to be a doctor or a lawyer, you probably want to rethink that. I understand doctors and lawyers are very good, and my parents still push me to go to that realm, and though I'm, you know, well into my 30s and have gotten a career. But computing is 16.3% of the 500,000 current job openings, everyone. So this is a real thing. These jobs are in every industry and in every state. They're projected to grow at twice the rate at all, at all other jobs. So I would wouldn't you want kid focus in this area where this is where the jobs are of the future? I had a teacher asked on a forum recently, why do I have to teach coding in my classroom? They're learning these skills through our regular curriculum. And, you know, I, it took a minute to actually fall back and go, okay, where is she coming from? Because why wouldn't she want her kid to learn to code? or her children in her classroom to learn to code. And I think the thing is that a lot of teachers are overwhelmed. They've got lots on their plate. They've got to teach a lot of things to their students within a short time frame. They're doing all these extra curricular in their class. Oh, this, you know, I went to a, a site-based meeting at my current, my child school this week, and the principal said, please, we have room for any more assemblies. The kids don't have time to actually learn because they're going to all these assemblies. Well, the interesting thing is that computing can be interactive and it can be part of your regular curriculum. You don't have to replace it. You don't replace things with computing. It can be part of it. Okay, so let's go forward to some more stats here in New York State, because our Long Island Women in Tech group and the majority of folks on the phone today are from New York. I wanted to share with you some of our staff in New York. There are 29,000 open computing jobs and only 35,000 computer science graduates in the state. And unfortunately, about 4% of high schools, AP Computer Science, 187 schools in the entire state. I know that, that sounds like I number, 187 is only 4% of the school. That is ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, if you want to know what I, I think about it, it's ridiculous. And we should all be advocating for our communities and our schools to be teaching this next generation how to code and how to deal with computers in the future not just how to use Microsoft Word, Microsoft Power, PowerPoint, please. Okay, um, there was a question that just came through. Would I share these slides after the session? Absolutely, my slides are stolen from, from code.org. I just reformatted them into my format, so absolutely you can use them as well. They're, they're usable and you can actually put your name on them. I don't care about plagiarism here. Oh. And one thing that we should really understand is that computer science is enjoyed by kids. So we really worry so much about how to teach them this stuff. We kind of look at it and go, hey, guess what? What kids say when they go to school is their favorite subject. Typically, it's gym, but that's not listed on this list, right? Art, design, music, okay? And then computer science and everything else falls below it. Imagine you can integrate your English curriculum with computer science. Imagine you can integrate your foreign language math and science and history curriculums with computer science to make kids interested and make them enjoy this, this activity. Well, I don't know, no brainer for me, but there are folks out there that believe otherwise and believe we're too busy to think about these things. So let me share with you how you can get kids interested into computer science today. And everyone on the phone today has this ability. I don't, it doesn't matter if you are a computer scientist today, if you've ever taken a coding course, you need zero skill other than the ability to click on a web page and I direct children to click on a web page. So if you do that, you're good. Don't worry, I'll pro I promise you. It's simple, okay, we'll get into it. How do we get kids interested in this? 
We tell them it's easy, of course, and we tell them it's really cool. And then we show them their favorite characters, of course. It is one of the biggest ways of getting kids interested in anything. Think of the Pokemon app. My goodness, they were so excited about that. Think about all of these other things like Anna and Elsa. When my daughter, since she was two years old, thought Anna and Elsa were her family. I mean, Minecraft, if you have a boy, I typically boys, but I'm being a little biased here because I know a ton of girls as well who love Minecraft. All want to learn how to make Minecraft mods, and parents are sitting back going, I don't know what a mod is. How do I do this? Hint, hint, it's code. So let's show you how you can get your kids interested in coding. The way we do that, the way that I like to do it typically is introduce the kids to Hour of Code. It's the first step in getting interested. But what Hour of Code? For those of you who have not heard about it, Hour of Code is a global movement. It reaches tens of millions of students every year in over 180 countries. They offer Hour of Code or Code.org offers one-hour computer science activities. And it is made, they, those activities are made for all learners, all ages, and you don't need previous experience. So if you decide that you don't want to bring this idea or this hour of code to any children because you're just not prepared for it, I ask you, take an hour of your own time and go out to code.org and get it out yourself. Teach us to code. It's actually a lot of fun. Uh, you'll be playing a video game for an hour. I think you can spare an hour every once in a while, even if it's at 2 a.m. when we are woken up by the dog barking or something. Okay. What else? It's available in over 45 languages, and it's interesting because it's actually introduced more girls to computer science than anything has in the last 70 years. So I know that many of you know that I've Started, I started women in tech because I didn't know any other women in technology roles. <laughs> it was really hard for me, even though I was working on Long Island. Um, in technology roles, it's, it's, a, it's a daunting statistic of under 20% um, and people to push 20% not there. Most companies are at around 11% women. So you're, you're likely not to have another female in the room when you're meeting with your team. And that's why I've been pushing for more girls to get into computer science so that we have an equal representation in this field. Okay. Um, yeah, I can offer as a, another um, option here. Lego Mindstorms is a great way to teach programming logic without typing in code. So while Hour of Code is an online tool and it's, it's about um, sequencing and such, it is not the only way that you can learn to code or have your children or other children learn to code. So there are ways that I'm going to share with you in a little bit uh, after we do the Hour of Code demonstration on how to do this when you don't have a computer around. Uh, kind of cool. And we've tried them in our house. I'll tell you what works and what doesn't. All right, so let's get into the demonstration. I also wanted to mention before I jump into that demonstration uh, that Computer Science Education Week is December 5th through the 11th. If you are a part of a library, a school system, if you run a Girl Scout troop, um, you should be doing something this week. It is part of, uh, you know, it's part of Computer Science Education Week, just like we have weeks that remind everyone not to do drugs, right? Computer Science Education Week is really a big week for, for the computer science industry, and it's a great time to get kids interested because there's so much promotion around it. Everyone from the President of the United States to Ashton Kutcher is promoting Computer Science Education Week, so kids can relate to this. Getting into the demonstration, so if you haven't seen this before, I'm going to share Google Chrome, which is my browser, in a second. So let me know uh, if anyone can't see it, if you can chat me and let me know, but it looks like it's sharing quite well. So you can see this is the code.org website. Um, it's really a great resource for not only but for the kids, right? So here on the left side, you see Hour of Code, and you can try Hour 
hour of code yourself. If you post an hour of code, it will give you every single tool to your own session. Whether it be a bunch of friends meeting up in your house to run a session for their kids, or you're running it for an entire school system, they have all the resources for you. This is how I ran our of code for Avalon Memorial Grade School, over 450 students last year. Just I that I gave, I had no other resources other than that link. Again, very simple. What else is on this page that I wanted to point out to you is this purple area area in the middle. This is students. Once the students do the hour of code, which is one single hour of a fun code program, this can move on to try Code Studio in some local classes or other online courses. By the way, the majority of these are free. And third on here, you have educator. And you, as an educator, you can click on the links for elementary school, middle school, or high school, and it will show you exactly the curriculum you can use to teach your kids coding while learning to read and while learning your math. So this is not you know, this is not the replacement to the typical core subjects here. Um, for those of you who really get excited, like I have, can be an advocate, and can kind of you can sign up here on the right side of the screen. And I hope to see after the session a bunch more advocates because really this matters for our future. Okay, let's go to try hour of code. So if you click try hour of code, it's going to bring you to this page, and you can click try it again. An option is there's uh, you can go to code.org forward slash learn to get to the page that has all the different tutorials. If you're a beginner, depending on your beginner, your level, beginner, comfortable, you can sort and filter this page. You can say, hey, I'm just doing preschool. What options are for preschool? By the way, my daughter's in kindergarten. She hasn't, she's not really ready to read anything outside of sight words. So puppy adventure, she gets really excited about puppy adventure. Or I just tried Codable today. I thought that was a really fun one. The kids get to learn sequencing. Okay. Today I'm going to do something that I know how to do very well because I did it with 450 students. It's called Star Wars. So open up Star Wars. And there's two options here. And I like the Star Wars tutorial because it gives you the option to use Blockly with a block. Um, which is a graphical language, allows you not to have to write JavaScript directly. So if you don't know how to code, this is a good way to start. Another option is just writing pure JavaScript. And by the way, by the time the kids got through a half hour of Blockly, they wanted to learn pure JavaScript and they were jumping over into the next tutorial. So instead of going and jumping ahead, we're going to go into Blockly right now. And what it does is it starts out with a video Again, as a teacher, you don't have to do anything other than let the kids watch it. It's a great video. I'm not going to go through it today. You should do it um, after this session today. Um, when you get to the, to the second move, you're going to act a second screen here. This is your, your drawing board of where you're going to start coding. And what they do is they give you a live system over here. This is what you're coding. They do all these blocks, which is Blockly way of writing JavaScript, okay? And you can drag and drop the blocks to connect them. Very simple. Add a second write command to your code, then click here to run it. Okay, very simple commands. I want to do move right, move right. What we're trying to get is BB-8 to grab and eat this guy here, the scrap metal. He's got to get the scrap metal. So if I run, it goes grabs a scrap metal. Guys, I just wrote two lines of code, and that was online with all of you watching, and nothing hurt. You? I don't think so. So guess what? Top universities teach block-based coding like this. So Berkeley and Harvard. So this is not just you know a game and silly stuff. It's not just JavaScript. It's it's blocky, and it's taught by the major universities out there. Okay, second level. So kids will go through, and the challenges get more and more difficult, just like a video game would. Once they get to the end, they can actually code their own video game, and they save it, and guess what they can do now? 
they can send it to their parents to play the video game. The kids love this end. So when they get to the end here, they can cut the arrows to do certain things. They change the color of the screen. They have all these different commands here. They can change points. They can add points and remove them. I loved it when the kids were adding a thousand points every time they moved forward once. You know, they, they just loved it. Um, so, like I said, this goes from the beginning to the very end in a tutorial like fashion, not requiring the educator to know anything other than the screen. The screen provides all the instruction. The other thing I wanted to mention here is that if you've not done this before and you plan on hosting it for, say, a Girl Scouts troop or Boy Scouts troop or, a, you know, a sports team, that's another good way of getting kids involved, uh, you may want to run through it yourself once to make you know how to do it. If you get stuck, guess what? There are tutorials along the way. So there are, on this screen here, you can go to your notes. Started. I'm going to do it again. When you first started, you clicked on Star Wars. They had all this information about the Star Wars um, tutorial. And it says teacher notes. And the teacher notes gives you a video on how to do it, a lesson plan, how to extend this beyond the computer and beyond the classroom. You have everything you need. Like, it was the easiest way for me to learn to teach kids to do something. There's other things out here as well on the page. So it's not just Star Wars. If you're not a fan, I'm, I'm a fan. Can you tell? Uh, there are things like Code Combat, which looks like a real video game. So um, it's fun. I love it. Uh, you, get to, you get to do certain things with your Python, which is a different language, like we said before. Um, you, can, you can unlock certain Thing. It does require some purchasing along the way. Uh, if you've ever used a online game, they always have upsell. But you don't have to. So you can just click play and move forward uh, through the program without having to purchase anything. Okay. Uh, what else? We have Minecraft. Okay. So like I said before, Minecraft is a big deal. Um, there's a bunch of introductions. Uh, I don't know if you know of Gumball. Gumball is the most annoying character on TV nowadays. Uh, parents, by the way, it's a Cartoon Network, and the kids love it. Um, but they have a great instruction by Google here, so you should, the kids can check that out. Anna and Elsa, this is a little more difficult. I just want to mention, it's not the easiest one, so if you have a little one, you probably don't want to start with Anna and Elsa. It's a little more difficult. Excuse the dog in the background. Last but not least, the most simple items like Codable here, you can actually get your children to learn sequencing. Uh, the first sequence is to go left, to right, and then to go down, and so on. Um, and you, if you check them out, try a few, get your kid to try them. I bet they can teach you how to use them. Uh, by the way, my daughter taught me how to use the first one. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now because that's the end of our quick demo. I'm going to just check to see if there are any questions along the way. If I have any questions, let me know. You know what I'll do is I'll unmute the line. I have a few more slides I want to share with you what I'm going to do next. I'll share with you what you can do post-call. So after this call, what can you do as a teacher, parent, or community member? And then the second thing I'm going to go through is I'll spend another few minutes, it'll be about 10 more minutes, to go through a bunch of tools and tips. So different things for different age levels. So I'm not going to go through them right now, but what I'll do is I'll take questions first and go through all the different tools and tips that we learned. And then if you have any tools or tips on Teach Kids to Code that you want to share with the group, absolutely do so because we're recording this call and we'll share it out on YouTube later um, in the evening today. Okay, um, unmute the line. Hi, everyone. So, got background kids? Mute. <laughs> you guys are fucked up like that. Hi, everyone. Yeah, you, why did your dad eat your brother with a bat? Uh, Bill's talking in the background. He gets muted. <laughs> All right. Questions on the phone on how to get this started, or does anyone help getting this started in their community and would like to ask me to come, come along? 
to you, but I'm going to go through some of these things that you can do today as parents, as teachers, as community members. So as teachers, let's talk inspiring your students with Hour of Code in the classroom. You only need one hour. Maybe you make it their, you know, their breakout hour. Um, also need, uh, you also can invite a professional to speak to the students. So that's another great way to get the students really excited. Uh, I never thought that my job was this exciting, but I went into the school district last year and I, uh, when I taught all those kids to code, I did a, an assembly. And they were cheering and chanting and they were having a great time. It was like a pep rally, I swear. But the kids got really excited because I was a real coder. You know, they didn't know anyone that did that. Um, you can coding club using free online curriculum. So a lot of teachers can be paid to do after-hours clubs. This is a great way of trying something new. You have curriculum already written for you, and you have the tools. Again, very simple to do. Um, but not least, I think adding coding to your regular science curriculum can really bolster the kids' learning ability. They're going to learn something much more quickly when they understand this sequence of, of code. Aaron asks, where do you volunteer? So the way you can volunteer is the link at the top here. I'm going to actually paste it into a screen. So code.com, US, how to. So if you go there, they have a sign up page and it allows you to sign up. As last year, the way I started was I went here and I signed up, and the cool way, thing was I got phone calls from, phone calls, I got emails from a bunch of schools around Long Island that asked me to do video conferences with them. Um, so I, I did a FaceTime with a, a, a group of uh, seniors in my, my cousin's school. They were in math class and told them what I do for a living. I thought that that was really fun. That was actually really impactful. A bunch of those students asked me to teach them more later on. Uh, just make yourself available to people so that they understand that this is a simple thing to teach and learn and that it's not, uh, it's not out of reach. Parents, so not in the industry. You don't want to volunteer to be a speaker or whatnot. What can you do with your own kids every day? One, I would ask you right now to go right to your school send an email to the principal, send an email to the administrator, the superintendent, and ask them whether or not they're running an hour of code this year. And if they're not, show them how easy it is. The cool thing about hour of code, guys, is that they give them the tools. Not only that, if you have the way to write that email, code has already written that email for you. You can paste the email template on how to ask a principal for support and put it in an email and send it to your principal. You don't have to do much. Now, if your kid is already doing this at school, that's wonderful. Uh, did you ask your local library if they're doing it as well? Because guess what? Kids who are not in the public school system also should get this, right? Um, or in your current school. Or if they're young, too young to go into to school, they should also get this. There's library programs out there, and I recently just spoke to my public library to get them started. Um, also, you can share these games with your kids instead of TV time after school. So when kids go, can I turn on the TV? By the way, they, they still ask me, so they're young enough to do that, right? Uh, they ask me, can I turn on the TV? And I go, no. Have you taken an hour to play on the computer? And I play on the computer, and they go, oh, yeah, I want to do this. So I always get them to, quote, unquote, play on the computer by doing some coding games. Um, and also talk to your kids about computer science. Teach them the basics at home. Let them understand that jobs in computer science are really thriving, and that's probably an area they might want to consider when they grow up. Okay, what is there? Community members. Spread the word in your community or workplace. Your workplace is, is, is a specific place that I think may not know about this, and they may want to support it. So again, last year I was working for a large company, and that company did sponsor me to go and do Hour of Code with 450 students. So think about that. That's a great way of getting, getting some sponsorship money and your employer to get involved 
involved into these programs. So I volunteer in a local classroom. Again, click that link. You can be an advisor. You can give them a video chat. You don't have to do much. You don't even have to spend an hour or you can spend 10 minutes. Also, their way is recruiting a local group like girls or Boy Scouts, church members, universities, veterans. Everyone wants to do something to impact, um, not everyone, but many of these groups are looking to impact the community in a positive way, and this is one of the ways they can do that. Takeaways for today. I know a lot of you are probably like, okay, this was my only lunch hour, so I've got to run out. So I want to give you these key takeaways, until, uh, and then I'll spend some time on the tools in a bit. The takeaways. Hour of code is for everyone. Who's our code? for? It's for Celine, it's for Pam, it's for Melanie, it's for Leah, it's for Len, it's for Karen, it's for Bill. Hour of code is for all of you. Um, can you run the event? You can do computer science education week, which is December 5th, or you can do it right now. Available to you at any time, anywhere, to anyone. Um, you can sign up today. I recommend taking 10 minutes to try to code yourself. If you need help, ask me. I'm completely there to help you. I'm going to put my email address in the chat right now. And you can, should you have any questions on how to run Hour of Code. I don't work for the company, guys. I don't get paid to do this. Uh, so just know I'm doing it uh, because I care and it matters to me and it matters to our kids. So that's my contact information. And please keep in touch. I'm going to, again, pause for questions and then go into these additional resources here. Uh, some good ideas for uh, Christmas and holiday gifts and, and Hanukkah gifts coming up too, so if you want to stick around for a bit. Uh, Any on the phone? I don't usually get questions on the phone, unfortunately. All right, I'm going to go through these ideas here of, uh, of good ways of bringing coding to your preschooler. Um, school and, and maybe even a little bit beyond preschool, maybe up to non-reading age. So first grade, the first grade. There are three things here that I thought were important to point out. There are actually four things. Uh, I didn't list the last one. But the first one is Coda Pillar. Fisher Price just recently came out with a toy that teaches sequencing. And the, the purpose, uh, the big thing about coding is that there's sequence and there's logic. Sequence is the order that things go in, and logic is kind of like the grammar of coding. Like, what does it actually have to say? Uh, the, 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 it's the, yeah. So the two, two points. The first portion we always try to teach kids is the sequencing, because again, that's the first, the fundamental. And Good Pillar helps kids learn that. I'm actually going to try try and get one this year for one of my um, my nieces and see if she'll like it. She's going to be she's three. So um, board games. There are a few board games out there if you don't have a computer available to you. By the way, my it's sad today, but my library system does not have computers. They have like three. So we're going to be doing board games initially, and we're going to start moving into smaller computers and Arduinos and things like that. Mobile apps, there is a bunch of mobile apps. I really like Tiny Bops, the Everything Machine. Check that one out if you're, you have a preschooler. Um, very helpful, easy for parents to understand, and, and easy to learn. I um, also put in today, I just threw this one in there, that there's a really cool computers and coding book that's good for preschoolers. It's a flip book, so that you go through it all the way. They do need someone to read it to them um, because it's got big words in it. But uh, it's available on this website. I found it uh, through my cousin who uh, actually sells the book. So uh, I am promoting her site, but it, you probably can get it elsewhere. I just wanted to share with you a place you can get it. Uh, those of you who would like to partner up, uh, Bill mentioned that if anyone wants to partner up to reach out to the school and library and middle country school. So reach out and in the chat here if you know in middle country school. Go on to the next level, which is elementary. And in the Babylon School District, we have elementary and grade school. This is really up to ages 9, 10, maybe further. Um, there's a few of these programs that go further beyond 10 years old, maybe all the way up to 16, but uh, these are really made for kids who know how to read, 
or have some basic reading ability, okay? So this is block-based coding. And I, mentioned, I showed you Hour of Code today, which is all the way at the bottom of the list. I also showed you Code Combat, which is really good for nine-year-olds and above. But at the time, we have a few other programs. Scratch Junior is a free coding program for ages five to seven, and there's a tablet version. This is really good, guys. <laughs> this is a really good one. I recommend it. And even if they're a little older than seven, they probably will enjoy it. Uh, then Scratch themselves. So, Scratch, the program for older kids, 8 through 16, is available. It's, um, it's By the way, Scratch is built by MIT, uh, so definitely a, a legitimate program out there and something that many people use today. Um, Scratch is a great program and, and another good thing to check out. Tinker. Tinker is great. Um, the only thing about Tinker that I, I warn you is that a lot of the fun stuff you have to pay for. But remember I said Minecraft mods and how to turn Minecraft into coding time? There are modules here to learn how to code Minecraft mods. If you pay for something, that's what I pay for because my kids want to do that. And I don't know how to teach them. So this, is a, this again, is a great resource if you want to go beyond just the, the drag and drop block-based coding. Um, I mentioned our coding and code combat. I like code combat because it does, it, it pushes the game part of the, of the uh, coding ability, and it also allows you to um, learn Python or other languages, so you can choose your language, so that's cool. I have something called a Kano, K-A-N-O. You can, I didn't mention it here. I'm going to, so if you go in your browser and type in Kano.me, a little Raspberry Pi, which is a small computer that allows you to put Scratch, that, that allows you to code Scratch. You can put it together. Um, Bill mentioned it. That's why I, I, I decided to mention it as well. He said he loves Scratch. His 11-year-old made a video game for the visually impaired last year for a science project using Scratch and a Raspberry Pi computer. Yeah, that's the type of things your kids can do when they learn just the basics here. Um, that's really cool Dylan, that Dylan did that. He learned Scratch on a Kano with his Raspberry Pi base, yep. Um, and that's what my daughter has is the Kano. So like you said, like you said his 11-year-old is doing things that people um, are doing nowadays. <laughs> that's kind of cool. That's been a great science project. I'm, I'm surprised I didn't see you at the science fair. You should have won. Um, let's go on to the next one. Middle school and high school. So this is where the majority of the students drop off. The schoolers in or around you, <laughs> you've got to get them interested. The way to get them interested is early, and that's why I really focus on those middle, that your, those age levels, because if they're interested early, hopefully they won't drop off. But there's this out there that says that specifically girls drop off of the, the idea that they can do science and math going about sixth grade to seventh grade. Same thing. They hit puberty and everything falls. All of this in science and math fields. What can we do to stop that? This is I'm here. <laughs> I've got two little girls and I care about that. So what I I would suggest there's a bunch of options here. We I mentioned Code Studio earlier. It is code.org's uh, platform for free programs to learn to code. Scratch, we just talked about how well, uh, well sued Scratch is for children. But there's also some really cool other things that might entice students that are not likely to, to get into computer uh, coding. The first two I'll mention, they're kind of jumped out of the slide, but App Inventor is the first one. App Inventor was built by MIT and Google, Google Labs. It's a form to create mobile apps. Time you talk to an older kid, over you know, about over two years old, they always go, I want to build an app. Can I build an app? Yes. And, and how you can do it. App Inventor is free. Um, then there's another thing, and it's called Make School. It's at the bottom of our list here. Make School offers you a way to build your own iPhone apps. Age 13 or older, um, it's very particular because the ch child has to provide an email address. 
But if you're with your, your child, I think you can handle it. Um, Make does the iPhone apps, whereas App Inventor does the Google uh, Android based apps. Other two I think are pretty cool. One is Grok Learning. Grok does Python 3 programming, which is the latest version of Python, which I said, again, is one of the biggest program languages because Google uses it all internally. Uh, obviously, you want to jump on that bandwagon. These two modules here are free, and there are great petitions for students. And but not least, the apps project. And this is great for a student who might not be interested in coding, but wants to know more about computing. And that's allowing them to create 3D animations and learning how to do that. So they're, if they're an artistic student, they might really love this. OK, there are a ton of others, guys. I can list out about 50 other programs that are out there and available to students today. Uh, I won't do that because I'll overwhelm you. There are ways to do coding outside of a the computer. They're all available to you on the code.org website. And by the way, code.org is, um, like I said, not for profit, and they do link to all these other sites. I will share the presentation to you as well in case you want to share it with others, or if you want to take it, write your name on it, and bring it to a school so they can convince the PTA to fund it or convince the school system to in introduce it into their school system. Um, any questions or comments or suggestions for this presentation today? We are almost at the end of our time. I, I hope that this was helpful and that you got what you needed out of it. And I, let, me, let me see if I can get um, my, I'm going to keep the what you can do slide up. And I'm going to run and go get one of my robots to show you this little guy that I think is really cool. That's another way of teaching your kids to code. So I am walking around the house trying to get it. Playroom lately. And I'm my video in one second. His name. So if you haven't seen Dash, she's one of my favorite people. I mean, robots. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to show you my video now, guys. Please excuse the makeup face. Look at Dash. He's so cool. <laughs> so Dash is a robot controlled by an iPad. The cool thing about Dash is not that he's just a robot, but that he also allows you to code him. So you can tell him sequences of events, and he does them. Like, for instance, I want you to go 20 feet, then turn left, then say hello to my mom. Yeah, that's what he can do. He can also do things like move his head up and down, so he can play a piano. He's a really fun, um, fun tool. So if you're, uh, if you're interested in buying something for Christmas or, or holidays uh, for your, your kids, Dash is one of my favorite tools, and I'm working on getting my library system to fund a Dash pack so we can get a robotics club started. I also am a, uh, I just got my, my approval to be a judge for this year's robotics competition with Dash and Dot, which is his little friend. I left Dot downstairs while I was running. Um, okay, so. There is a, a few comments in the comment section I want to check out. Um, Bill, kids who are into Star Wars can be challenged to make Star Wars games or animations. Sports fans can make sports games or trackers. Yeah, you don't have to just be into uh, science fiction to get interested in this coding program, guys. It's not, again, it's not restricted to just kids who do uh, computer games. Um, my five-year-old doesn't play computer games. She really likes Anna and Elsa, um, and she plays soccer. So there's a soccer game out there, and she uses that. But again, you don't have to be um, in computers to do this. So guys, uh, I thank you so much for joining today, and I really hope that you take some of the tips and tools that I shared. I'm going to share the presentation out to all the people who registered for the course, or not the course, but the design session. And I'll share with you the recording should you want to always want to listen to what I have to say over and over again. 
but again, thank you so much. And if you do have any questions, remember to reach out to me on my email address, Stefana at, <clears throat> I'm sorry, it's L women in tech at g.com. And we'll have a website, liwomenintech.com. I want you, uh, I'll mention this, it's a shameless plug for Long Island Women in Tech. We are women and men in technology will, uh, wanting to create equality in the business area. So one thing that I wanted to mention is that we do have our next session. It's an on-site session uh, that in the Microsoft Store at Walt Whitman Mall. So if you're looking for something to do after work, it's a good way to meet some people and learn a new subject. Take a look at our website for more details. It's on November 18th. All right, I really appreciate your time today and I hope to see you're doing our code. Let me know if you do it. I would love to promote it for you. Thank you. Have a great day.